Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Santa Rita Union School District Board Meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Start off with the roll call, please. Ms. Cindy Lopez? Here. Ms. Sarah Turner? Here. Ms. Alvariano? Here. Mr. Jacob Sandoval? Here. Mr. Neil Patel is not present. Okay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready to begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Okay, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? A hey, motion. Okay, can I get a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed, any abstention? No, motion carries. Uh, today on closed session, we have item 2.1, public employee appointment employment in the government code section 54957. We have item 2.2, public employee performance evaluation in the government code section 54957. And we have item 2.3, conference with real property negotiator. Um, is there any public comments regarding closed session items? There were no public comments. Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn to closed session? Motion to adjourn to closed session. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any position? Motion carries. We'll see everybody afterwards. Hey, Vera. How are you?
Light is a feather when I'm floating through. Reading through the daily news. Measure with the hurt within the golden rule. Sending me this ether. I'm heating the speaker. Motivational teacher with words that burn people. Singing that. Can you hear me, brother? Yeah. Apenas se oye. Kind of far, that's why, but uh, it should be good, man. A ver, talk to me, brother. Check, check. Yep, I can hear that. Hello, I don't think that <laughs> the music goes through that's why it is me you're looking for. Oh. <laughs> Chihuahua, <laughs> I, I can't get the earbuds to work. On that, I'll tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you set them up next time. It's another good thing.
Welcome to the back to the Senate of School Bill Reading. I'm calling this meet back into open session. During closed session, the board approved, or actually, I'm sorry, the board denied a request for an unpaid leave of absence for employee number 160755 for the 2024 2025 school year. The vote was three to zero with one abstention. We're going to move on to item 5.1. Can I get a motion to approve uh, consent agenda items 5.2 to 5.6? Make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? I second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Any no abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. Moving on to item 6.1. Is anybody here from SRTA? Are any comments submitted? Nope. Uh, anybody here from CSEA or any comments submitted? Okay, Superintendent's Cabinet, start off with the uh, Director of MOTF, Mr. Victor Sandoval. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. Everything's working fine today. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just want to say uh, I want to defer everything to my committee uh, facilities update. So I just don't want to take the time right now, but uh, I've got a lot of great things to say. All right. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Next, uh, Chief Business Officer, Ms. Rosa Zumudio. I have a budget report coming up, well. so I'm going to skip mine. Okay, sounds good. Okay, Director of Technology and Innovation, Ms. Krista. Yes. Careful. Yes. Hi. Um, yeah, we have a, a quite a few things on board. Uh, as you see, we'll have the approvals for uh, the ordering of our ViewSonics. Um, we're gearing up for the SVAC, and so making sure that all students are onboarded with that, and um, taking inventory as well for some of our um, upcoming orders. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay. Uh, Director of Engagement and School Climate, Dr. Summer Prather-Smith. I, of course, have things to say. Um, so I just want to start off um, by recognizing, you can see it in the video as well, our Community Resource Fair and Carnival is coming up, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday. Um, you should have had all these posters, should be at your school sites, um, in the front of your schools as well. And then I'll just pass out, um, our team met this week to finalize the layout. So on one side, you will see um, the layout for our community resource fair. I'm happy to report we have 37 organizations coming um, to our community resource fair. Um, thank you to Esther Medina with Migrant Ed, who used to be a um, uh, architect, like her major is architecture. So she laid everything out for us. So beautiful. Thank you, Esther. Um, so on this side, you'll see the map of the different organizations that will be there. And then on the main map side, you will see the carnival. It's hard to see. It's small. But we have lots of fun games and activities for students, a petting zoo, both a reptile petting zoo, as well as a mammalian petting zoo. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, mobile clinics that will be here doing health screenings, as well as vaccinations for our required vaccinations for seventh graders. Um, Lots and lots of great activities. Thank you to the Salvation Army who donated all the food. They're going to have a food truck with over 1,500 hot dogs, nachos, chips, and water. Um, we'll have Kona ice, bunches of other things. So we're really excited. We've been publicizing throughout lots of different media sources. So we're excited for that coming up, um, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday on April 20th from 11 to 3 here at Gavilan View Middle School. Um, carpool, because parking is always a challenge. That's my main report. Thank you. you no, know, I just want to say thank you because that was a, a, a board priority. And so you guys made it, made it come through. So thank you. We're excited to show up. Okay, moving on to Assistant Superintendent of Human Resource, Ms. Becky Moore. Thank you. Um, on the consent agenda tonight, we had the appointment of two program managers who will be working for our director of student services and special education, and I want to introduce them. Um, so we have Stephanie Mullenhop here, wave hello, <laughs> and Janelle Silva is here. Um, so congratulations to you both, we're really excited. Stephanie um, began at the beginning of this month, um, and if we can find somebody can who can take over Janelle's caseload, she will take over as soon as possible, but <laughs> definitely for next year, if not at the end of this year. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to say a few words? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you click on the green light to make it come green. 
Got it. Can you hear me? It's green. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just really want to say thank you for this opportunity. I was placed um, as a student teacher in 2016 in a SDC class um, and very quickly became a long-term sub and then was hired the following school year to be an RSP teacher at McKinnon. I love this district. Um, when the opportunity to become the SPEDTOSA came up, I wasn't sure if I was ready to leave the classroom, but I was really excited at the new opportunity. It was the best decision I ever made. Um, I really, really enjoy working with the women that I get to work to with. I learn so much from everyone, um, and I'm super excited for this opportunity. So thank you very much. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I also started working it here in 2016. Stephanie and I have had a long history of working together, which has been really nice. Um, so I will be leaving the classroom this year, which is kind of, it's a new adventure and I'm really excited for it. But um, I love this district and I have seen it grow and seen us um, really just learn and become a better district and serve our students in the best way possible. And I'm really excited to be able to continue that and now support teachers who are going to be supporting our families and our community. And I'm just really excited for this opportunity as well to be able to continue to support our students and our community. So thank you for this opportunity as well. Great. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the board? Yeah. Um, we're we're delighted. I love the direction that special education is going. And um, I think you guys are going to have a really strong team to really impact kids and help families and help teachers. So I'm delighted. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank, <clears throat> thank you for um, accepting the position. And I was a SPED teacher for two years and I had to get out. <laughs> I could not do it. So um, it takes a very special people to teach RSP and to have anything to do with the RSP department. So um, kudos to both of you. And um, thanks. It, it, I'm assuming they're your husbands <laughs> that are here to join them and uh, thank you very much because this is a great district to work for. It's small, but it's one of the best districts in, the, in Salinas. So thank you once again. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. That's it, okay. <laughs> and you're welcome to say, but if not, we understand. If you wanna sneak out, if you wanna sneak out, it's okay. <laughs> we understand, we understand. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Thank I you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the board and the superintendent. Start off with Ms. Inez Lopez. I don't have nothing to report. Okay. Uh, Ms. Arter. Um, I attended the facilities meeting and I know Victor's going to report about it later. Mm -hmm. And I'm always... I'm always so impressed by our maintenance department, but I'm also always so impressed. We have great representation from the sites talking about what we need. And um, I love how people work together and talk about what's best for the kids. Nothing to report this time around. Okay. And uh, myself neither. And thank you for stepping in for the, hopefully after uh, we have our state convention coming up that I've been planning for. So hopefully once it's over on the 27th, I'll have a little more time. So thank you. Um, Sup Superintendent Moore? I don't I mean, have a lot to report. Um, we had an amazing PD day. Uh, a lot of that planning, um, Summer and Becky's efforts to get everything in order. So that was a great day, what I got to go in and see and the feedback that I heard. Um, I wasn't able to help lift anything this time. Um, and so I got to sit in on some sessions and those were really great. I am ser currently serving as the the district test coordinator, so I'm the hub of all things SVAC right now and getting all of that done, uh, which is something I used to do, so it's okay. Um, and so we'll start that. I know Krisha is on board and getting a lot of things pushed out to the site, and I, be, I then shift into the one where if you can't solve a problem and you have to have me call the state, so that's <laughs> that's my current situation with that. Okay, any questions or comments? No? Okay. 
uh, 7.1, any public comments on non-agent items? We have no public and comments. At all, or on agenda items either. Right? Correct. Okay, moving on to item 8.1, Universal Mental Health Care Screener Post Data Project. So as they're getting it up, that's, this is my fault. As they're pulling that up, I just want to share. I wanted to give you a report out I shared with you. I shared with you a few weeks ago that we did the universal mental health screener for our sixth graders at Gavilan View in cooperation with um, CSUMB. And these are the overall results from that. Um, will the clicker work? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Thank you. As it's on, you can okay. okay. So, I just want to go through a couple of pieces. So, those are you can go to that next one. The next one's fine. Sorry, my fault. So, these are the folks that were involved. So, from CSU and B, you'll see their team there. Um, their lead faculty in the school psychology department, um, kind of held the lead in this. They also vetted all the universal screeners before selecting the one that we chose to use to make sure that it was both culturally relevant and accessible to our students. And then they'll see there they have a team of practicum students that were here to provide us support. What I'll say is really important about this is that all of those folks that are listed on their side as well as our side are what allowed us to respond to students in a timely manner. And that's one of the biggest concerns when um, implementing universal screeners, you want to have a team that's ready to respond. And so I'm really proud that we have that and we'll be able to continue that partnership as we move this work forward. So let's talk about why we should conduct this screener. So we want to be proactive in addressing the mental health of our students. Um, as I shared with you a little bit in our previous meeting, um, of the students that came forward, we had two students who had an imminent need for support. Neither of those students were on anybody's radar. So we hadn't, they weren't students that anybody was seeing or that recognized were in crisis. Um, and we were able to intervene with those students immediately. We also know that it provides us the data we need to make decisions about how to utilize our counselors and social workers in the best way. So you'll see as we kind of go through the results, it gives us the areas for each of our students. So as we're planning proactively for what we'll focus on in the following years, or do we need more staff? Do we not need more staff? How can they focus their time? It gives us data rather than just assuming. And then it brings a greater awareness and normalization to mental health as a whole. Right. So when we start to the same way that we screen for vision, it takes away kind of the stigma of needing glasses. If we screen for diabetes, it takes away the stigma of being diabetic. If we start to really look at mental health in that same way, it starts to remove that stigma for our families and for our students. So this is the tool that we used. It's called Check Yourself. And you'll see there that it's a multi-risk screener. And we're going to go through some of those. So it's not just looking at one area. What we were able to do as a team is really prioritize the areas that we wanted to tag for immediate response. So those are called like red flag areas. Um, those were bring alerts to us right away so that we could send a team to support a student in any of those areas. It takes the students between 15 and 20 minutes to take the, the screener. So it's not a lot of time for them to do it. And the real benefit of it is that they has visuals along with each of those words so that students who maybe have lower literacy skills or maybe attention skills when the teachers are sharing the information have the ability to see those visuals as well. Um, this is just kind of that tiered system um, of where we're looking all the way from the blue of setting those foundations up to that red where we have that immediate need. So let me show you a little bit about what those respondents look like. So you can see it on there. This is the population from our sixth graders that responded. Um, students get to self-select. We know that some students selected all nationalities, for example, because there's areas there that we do not have. Um, and one student in particular that I spoke to shared that he clicked all of them. So um, you <laughs> may wonder if some of those actually exist for us. They don't. But we had a really good representation. This represented all except for four of our sixth grade students. Um, these are the areas, one of the questions is around the positive coping strategies that students had available to them or that they could pull upon. So you'll see that um, almost all students noted a religious or cultural service that they're part of or belong to that they can turn to. Um, exercise, gaming, 
won't go through all of them for you, but it's great to see that our students have a plethora of coping um, strategies that they can use or areas that they can focus on. And that really helps us, us to bring those forward for them as well. So here are those risk factors that we really looked at. So those areas that were tagged in red for us, so suicidal ideation within the past year, self-harm or suicide attempts, um, as well as bullying or at-risk behavior, any of those drew our immediate attention. You'll see the percentage of students that scored in the red. So 11% of the respondents had a suicidal ideation within the past year. 11% of our students had um, had self-harm within the last year, 6% suicide attempt, and 2% bullying. We know that there's some error margin in there because students will just pick, but that's pretty representational of what we anticipated seeing overall. Um, you can also see some of those areas like attempting to control weight, alcohol use, um, vaping use that come forward. This is that data we need for our drug, alcohol, and tobacco counselor, as well as our social worker that's present. Um, these are some of the um, strategies that our students can use or some of the, the positives that they have going for them that they can turn to. So we see arts and crafts, they have friends, they go to, they, we saw 56% see school as a positive, which that's great. We want to see that. Um, the use of technology or how they're making connections with others as well as reading and writing. So the challenges... Um, that we looked at very specifically within this is students who didn't know where they were going to have a place to sleep that night. So 2% of our students noted that they didn't know where they were going to uh, sleep that night. Use of alcohol and tobacco, 4%. To me, that justifies that's one grade level, our drug, alcohol, and tobacco counselor, um, for sure. A family member who's incarcerated, uh, physical fighting or harm to animals, as well as skipping or missing meals, which is that largest area, 9% of our students have that concern. So that really speaks to our continued uh, collaboration with the Monterey County Food Bank. These are what some of the students noticed, noted as their biggest supports. Um, moms are doing a great job, 76% of them, as well as dads at 56%. Um, we saw a lot of family members in there for students as well. We saw 20% note their coach or their teacher. So we know that every student benefits from having a caring adult. It's the the, the way that we can mitigate risk for students in the most efficient way. So at school, one of the questions is at school, there is an adult who, we had 62% say that there's an adult who tells them they did a great job. It's nice to see. 60% believe that a, there's an adult who believes they can succeed. 54% that says they know to go to for help. 50%, 6% said there's somebody who will listen to them. And 51% said really something at the bottom, which I can't see, but it's okay. So with red flags, so we had 55% of our students who had no red flags at all. Nothing came up for them. They were all in the blue. They're doing great. We had 29% with red flags of some sort. It's important to let you know that when we screened those, 11, about 11% 11 of those came out as truly red flags, which you saw. The others were things like they responded to a question like, have you ever... Um, uh, around self-harm. And when we, when we did the intervention, they said like, yeah, I twisted my ankle when I was playing soccer. Right. <laughs> so it was a misunderstanding of the context of the question. So it's nice to know that it was not truly 29%. It was more around that 11% and 16% who are in that yellow, which means we want to provide them direct intervention. So they don't end up in the red. So last, so what we're doing, um, so we're following up, we followed up with all red flag students immediately. They received intensive support and interventions. Um, we determined some of those services needed within what we have. So was that daybreak health, a referral to care solace, work with our social workers. Um, all of that was entered into ARIES and our counseling tab for everybody so that we could keep track of that and monitor. Safety plans were put into place for anybody in the high risk areas. Um, Drop-in hours were created. We directed our district social worker over so that he was there to support as well. We're using that data that was collected to determine our plans for our counselors and social workers for the 24-25 school year. Um, followed up with sixth graders who are receiving counseling um, within the screener. And then next year, we're looking at what does it look like implementing at another grade level so that we get that information. And that's the end. Thank you. That was okay. the speed round. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> questions or comments?
Um, there was one thing in there that said follow up with sixth graders that were re- who are receiving services but were were not flagged. Are we exiting people? Or are we just are we keeping them with what they're doing? What are Our we doing? Social workers would like us to be exiting people. Um, so <laughs> we there were students who were receiving services who did not come up with a red flag. So what our social work team did is kind of reevaluated those students and maybe moved them to a check in check out versus a direct daily service. Yeah. yeah. And just for the clarification of the group, I was the intervention teacher. And sometimes people would get a lot of intervention because their parents thought they needed intervention yeah. and the professionals sometimes. Yes. Sometimes. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, see, I like the quote that was up there that said uh, every child is one caring adult from a success story. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's one thing that kind of reminds us as well, because um, within my business, I meet people as adults and then if they're from Salinas, I kind of ask them like, what school did you go to? And I meet people who are about the same age as myself. And I'm like, did you go to school? And they said, no, we didn't finish school or got kicked out or whatever, but now they're doing really well. And a lot of times they'll mention that they met that one adult or that one person that cared that just really shifted their, their lives. So, so thank you. Okay. Thank you. So that was an informational item. So 8.2 informational facilities committee update. Well, I guess I'm up to, I'm up to bat here. Um, so we had a pretty uh, good meeting and basically, I started off with uh, the spring break um, projects that we did, and uh, I gave an update on the JGMS blacktop repairs. Currently, right now, they did some repairs, and I have an email out to the general contractor to see if they feel that it's up to the specifications and the plans. So right now, we're um, we're having them come out and tell us if they're ready for an inspection. So uh, right now we haven't given them our opinion. However, uh, that's gonna follow through probably next week. Um, also we had over the, the winter break, we had uh, gutter replacement at three sites, which was La Jolla, McKinnon and New Republic. And during the winter, we actually, did the rainwater leaders. Now the rainwater leaders are the ones that come off the gutter into the storm drain. So we finished that up during that week. Um, the other thing that we did at over at La Jolla, we installed a new pole and a new transformer for the new uh, portables that are going in. Um, this is the project that I was telling you that we had kind of set aside about $80,000 uh, and uh, we received this for free. Uh, PG&E was kind enough to do it in a timely manner, and uh, they they did it all for no cost. So um, the last thing that we did over that break was the solar uh, panel fix. Now, I did promise you when I first started, I would try and fix the solar, the solar oh, situation. However, um, we have replaced all the inverters over at uh, Santa Rita. So we're using Santa Rita as a test pilot. Uh, the inverters were replaced with hybrid inverters, um, and we are going to now start working on the BMS, which is the battery management system, which will back up uh, back up the site just in case the power goes off. So that's um, what we had for the uh, spring break. Uh, in regards to the phasing plan, uh, I have to start by saying um, the new seismic regulations, of course, I, I, I know I kind of been always kind of telling you about DSA's new guidelines for buildings and stuff. Their seismic uh, regulations now are over and above. And what we were going to be replacing some portables on concrete foundations cannot be done solely because they don't meet the seismic regulation anymore. Um, they're a little bit more stringent. Uh, we're not too far off. However, uh, the portables that we were taking from what they call a stockpile, a stockpile meaning that they were built to current standards from the previous regulation, um, cannot be placed on a concrete foundation now. So. Uh, Division of State Architects has let us do the wood foundation, but not the concrete foundation, solely because of the seismic retrofit. Uh, with that, we're going to be switching over two of the projects over to the next phase. Uh, the project that was uh, 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 
I would say that was affected was uh, JGMS. Now, taking advantage of that delay, we're going to switch over from a regular 24 by 40, which is the long, narrow, portable to a 30 by 32, which is more of a square. Uh, it's a little bit more conducive for teaching and stuff like that. So um, we're going to be able to still place those on a wood, uh, on a not on wood, but a concrete permit or pier foundation and flush to grade. So we're going to be taking advantage of that. Uh, I know it's kind of a delay. However, it's probably the right choice. Uh, better building uh, with, you know, a better seismic retrofit. The other project that uh, was affected was because of our summer school program. Um, we were going to redo the play structure flat ground over at Santa Rita. However, because we're using the whole entire site for our summer program, we kind of delayed that to the next project. There are two other projects or three or four other projects that actually got affected was because of the TK funding. Now we know that the TK funding has been delayed. Uh, is it going to be a year? Is it going to be two years? We don't know. But I'm when I'm going to work with the facilities committee on restructuring the phasing plan and then present it to you for board um, ratification. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, okay. Thank you for the update. Any questions from the board? No. Okay. Thank you for the update, Victor. Okay, moving on to 9.1, approval of resolution 24.04.04, resolution of the Board of Trustees declaring its intention to establish a community facilities district. Thank you. Um, this is granting the district permission to establish a community facilities district specific to the area known as the West Area Specific Plan. Um, and this allows us to incur bonded indebtedness within the community facilities district and to authorize levy of a special tax therein and approving other actions related thereto as we move forward. Okay, thank you. Can I get a motion to approve? I motion to approve. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 No opposition, no abstention. Motion carries. 9.2, approval of the second interim report for the 2023-24 school year. That's my item, and I'm going to go on the screen. You have a copy with you. Um, I provided a nice summary of uh, the budget analysis on my Friday later, letter and also on board docs as well that is included on the budget report. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just talk about um, the most significant changes uh, since I, I already have that summary, and then if you have any questions, just feel free to stop me. So I'm going to try and see if this one works. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to. So just to give you um, a little summary, um, taking in consideration for, for the second interim report is pretty much all the changes that were made um, after the December 1st interim report. And one of the most significant changes after the January budget release was the COLA for next year. Uh, during the first interim, we budget at 0%. Now they're advising to do the 0.76% for next year. Keep in mind that that still keeps the district um, local COLA at a negative 3%. So we're still looking into a um, kind of like a budget cut for $1.4 million. Another big change that we have now in this um, budget is the use of one-time uh, funds that we're using a very strategic manner for all those mental health services and SPED contracts to be able to afford the one-time payment and the 6% salary increase, which is also included in this budget. We also have some savings on vacancies, over half a million dollars. And I'll talk more about the one-time funds if we can go to the next slide. This is just a snapshot of the LCFF. As I mentioned before, we are looking into a revenue reduction for next year due to the 0.76 COLA, which translate into a negative COLA for the district of $1.4 million. On the next year out, we're still looking into a negative 1% COLA. This is 
as of today, unless the state um, changes the information. So the next um, information that's going to come is in the May budget. So we're waiting to get that information um, to make the next changes. Okay, just looking at the first interim compared to the second interim, you see a increase in federal revenue. This is due to our one-time funds that we were able to budget um, specifically to the ESR3 funds. Like I mentioned, we are increasing the, the revenue at the top line, but we're also increasing some of the contract services that we move. We have some money uh, budgeted in salaries and benefits. So overall, I know that you see a an increase. Um, if you remember the one-time payment and the 6% um, salary increase for all district employees, it was about $4.1 million. So you don't see, um, if you see the total expenses on the difference for from the first interim to the second interim, you don't see that $4.1 million. You only see a 26 The main reason for that is that we also had savings and vacancies. We had savings on extra hourly from those one-time funds that we were able to bu do budget transfers and move that into contract services. So there was a lot of going on behind the scenes. So the 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 budget can look a more not not as bad as it would look with the increase of a 4.1. So I'm actually really happy to see the numbers like that, even though it's still we still need need um, some work to do, but it's looking better as, as I thought it was going to look. So overall, on the as you can see on the on the bottom line, compared to the deficit that we had on the first interim to the second interim, it's only an increase of 1.5, even though we had that huge increase of a $4.1 million for the, for the settlements. We can go ahead and move. We also had a savings on the build back. If if we go back, well, you don't have to go back, but the, the 328, 328,000 was pretty much a savings that we also got on the bill back. Those are the services that we um, get. The MCOE provides for special education for us. So that, that was great. That also helped with the savings. Um, we move to the next slide. So when you see the overall fund of one, we're deficit spending, projecting to a deficit spend of $3.4 million. Again, next year, all of those uh, one-time funds, we don't have them anymore. So we're reducing revenue. We're also reducing expenses. Um, same with the next year out. We don't have those one-time funds. So we're making sure that all of those expenses that we had, we're, we're reducing those as well. As you can see on the expenditure line, you, you see a, a decrease on expenses. The good news about this is that even though with this projected um, deficits, we still are able to to commit to our 17% board uh, reserves. So that's that's great news. Um, we do have some work to do as well, and we're hoping to hear good news from the state as this is not just Santa Rita going through this um, deficit spending. It's happening, and for other districts, it's happening way, way worse than us, so... Um, I'm not feeling as bad. Now, what I wanted to highlight here is the unrestricted fund. Why? Because like I mentioned, we do have a lot of those one-time funds that are ending. And as I mentioned before, some of those are at the bottom in the savings. So when we are using the one-time funds, sometimes it looks like we're on the red, but that's because we're getting the money from the bottom. Now, when we look at the unrestricted, this is our ongoing funding. This is where we get our LCFF funding, about 82%. Um, we're still spending here on salaries and benefits on employees. So this is pretty much the one that I keep an eye on it. Uh, we're at $1.9 million. Um, if you think about it, we have that one-time payment, which is about $2.1 million that we are getting from the bottom. So um, it's not looking as, as bad. It is for a reason. We do have that one-time payment, but it's not happening next year. So it's only for this year, but not we're reducing that on the next year. All right, so this is just a snapshot of the ending fund balance. Um, as you can see, we do have our 17 reserves. We have um, committed our LCAP. We still have ending fund balance, even though after paying that one-time uh, payment. And this is the main reason for this is because we've been reserving that LCAP ending fund balance over the last three, four years. So it looks higher than other districts because the district just started last year to, to do this. We've been doing in... Um, doing this since before. So that's why we've been reserving those LCAF uh, funds in there. Uh, we also have uh, one 
about $1 million reserved for ongoing expenditures from the one-time funds. As I mentioned, we do we are paying some of those contract services for mental health and SPED services. So going to next year, some of those might be ongoing. So we are reserving those funds for to continue to provide those services if needed. We can move to the next slide. This is the preschool fund run by MCOE. Um, they, the good news for this is that they did receive more funding. They, they receive a, a new contract and they're allocating most of that. As you can see, $67,000 on the allocated on materials and supplies and um, equipment. We can go ahead and move. Cafeteria fund is doing great. Uh, higher participation, so higher um, revenue. And as you can see, they also had more expenditures or an increase on expenditures on salary and benefits. Um, and this is due to the salary agreement as well. And the supplies as well, because they have higher participation, so they have to purchase more uh, food for the students. And overall, it's doing great. They still have a surplus, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. They're, they're doing excellent. Fund 14, um, this is the fund where we're paying some of the maintenance for, for facilities and also the Santa Rita restaurant project. We um, we were able to budget some of that project for the Santa Rita restroom out of the fund 21, created a savings here before it used to have a zero ending fund balance. Now we have some flexibility in case any of that cost gets higher. We'll have there um, enough funding to cover that. Um, can go ahead and move to the next one. Fund 21, thank you, Victor. So Victor pretty much gave you a summary of some of the projects that got delayed. So as you can see, there is a difference um, with the first interim, $4.5 million. It is due to those projects that Victor just talked about that got delayed um, due to the summer program and, and things like that. Um, you can go ahead and, and go to the next one. Uh, fund A, 25, 35, and 40, we didn't have any material um, changes, actually no changes. So we have the forms in there. Um, um, I'm here if you have any questions. I just have one question. There was one thing that you mentioned that uh, we've been doing, but the other school districts just started doing regarding to the LCAP ending fund balances. Can you describe what that is? Yeah. yeah. So... Um, <laughs> but, uh, let, let's see if I can summarize this. Long story short, um, the main purpose for the LCAP is to reserve the LCAP dollars for those students that are in need. So what the districts were doing um, in the last year since we received the LCAP, whatever money they didn't spend in the LCAP, they just would put it on unrestricted and spend it on whatever they wanted to. Uh -huh. So when the state came and started doing audits to the district, they were saying like, okay, like you're not um, restricting these funds. These funds should be for your students that are unduplicated, not for all the district, for example. So then recently they passed a law last year, right? Right, summer last year, where now they are based on the new law, the ed code, it forces, in a way, the districts to make sure that when they close the books, they're reserving that LCAP funds and that money just for those students. So any money that is not spent, for example, last year, it gets rolled over to this year and those students get the opportunity to, to receive those services on the new year. We, It's not a problem. It's a good thing. We've been doing that since I got here. So for the last five years, when I got here, I said those students that money we need to restrict it because it's for those students. And because I work at the county, I, I kind of like was seeing that that was kind of like a problem. Mm -hmm. So we started doing that. And since we started earlier, or LCAP and fund balance keep increasing, especially during the COVID years, because we were using the one-time funds. So that created more savings in the LCAP. And because of that, we have a large LCAP ending fund balance, which is great. And we've been using it for, for those specific students. So like I mentioned, we are using, because of that, we're able to afford that one-time payment for our um, for employees. And we still, even with that, we still have some ending fund balance from prior, prior years. So, and it's not just one year, it's accumulation of several years. Um, that's pretty much the summary. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. Thank you. And I appreciate you making that good practice for our district too, because that's what it should have been. So thank you. And it's also doing the good work on the front end too, because it's, it could be that you're, you're 
you're funding part of your principal salary out of it because the principal is doing professional development related to, you know, there's, but it, it's, it's being really specific about what exactly, you know, if you're using it to fund a person, what's that person doing with that money rather than just like, oh, we're going to use it to fund this job. Well, no, you're not like what, what, what specific thing are you doing with it? And I just say, I was going to add, I think it's really important because now it has to also carry into our new LCAP. So that's, what's going to help us keep the counselors and social workers that some of the one-time funding are getting rid of. So they'll see that back at our LCAP with that ending fund balance for those mental health supports. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, Can I get a motion to approve? Unless there's any other questions. I just a comment gratitude as always for the huge level of work and professionalism that is always shown by the leadership in this district. I really appreciate it. Motion to approve. Okay. Can I get a second? I second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. No obsessions, no opposition. So motion carries 9.3 approval of the, of right at school service agreement for summer and 24 and 25 school year. Thank you so much. So this goes to our ELOP plan that I brought to you a while back. Um, so Madonna Catiz, our new coordinator of expanded learning, she's got a whole title. Um, and I were able to go visit several after school programs, which was really nice. So we went over in locally as well as to others that are not here, um, who are in more in the Bay Area and met with each of them and right at school came right to the top. Um, we were able to talk to parents without them present to students, to staff, to the administration. Um, and we were really, really happy with what we heard overall. So this is bringing forward that contract. It'll They'll serve our expanded learning during our summer program, so from 1 to 4.30. And currently, we already have 125 students who have expressed interest. We have 307 who have um, submitted the intent to attend summer school, and over 100 of those have said they need expanded learning. Um, so I just want to caveat that because I might be bringing forward a supplement to this contract for additional services. We went with kind of a lower number um, initially to start, and then we could build from there. Um, so this will serve our summer, and then they'll be at each of our school sites for um, after school program beginning in the next year as well. Okay. Awesome. Exciting. Can I get a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Okay. Second, please. I second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. No abstentions, no opposition. Motion carries. 9.4 approval of MOU with artists to provide music classes at John Goodfriend Middle School. Okay. Um, so this is to um, support the music program at John Gutierrez Middle School during the regular school day. Um, there's currently a leave in that position, and we were able to assign a substitute teacher, but that substitute teacher is not a music teacher. As you know, it's hard to get music teachers in general, let alone a music teacher. And we really wanted to make sure that those students had equal access to that art. And so we were able to partner with Artist Inc. So there's a certificated teacher within that classroom, and then Artist Inc. has stepped in, and they're providing the music instruction with music teachers um, during that school day so that students don't lose that continuity of that service. Okay, and we and got to visit there this morning and the students had the instruments out and were playing and they were so excited oh. to have music instruction again. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. And that's because of the leave. That's kind of the reason why we had this. Okay. Can yeah. I get a motion to approve? A motion. Okay. Second, please. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. No abstentions. Opposition. Motion carries. 9.5, approval MOU between Santa Rita Union School District and the Boys and Girls Club of Monterey County. This is me too. So um, part of our ELOP plan has been to meet with each of our partners who have already been serving our students because we don't want to end the services that have already been effective. So we met with Boys and Girls Club and what we're doing with this MOU is funding our students who attend the Boys and Girls Club so that they can continue to attend the Boys and Girls Club without a fee. So we'll cover all those costs and it also provides some supplemental services that our students are going to be able to receive while attending the Boys and Girls Club. So again, it'll take that annual fee away from parents and it'll um, we'll cover that fee under our ELOP funding. I have a question. Do we um, also provide transportation? So Boys and Girls Club provides transportation, and that's part of what this money helps supplement is their ability to have that transportation. Thank you. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve, 9.5. Okay. Second, please. Second. Okay. All those in favor okay. say aye. 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 In opposition. No abstention. Motion carries. 9.6 approval of the purchase of a new box truck. That's for my department, by the way. <laughs> so um, this is the box truck that we have been waiting for over a year. And we're it's finally available. And we're getting it through the 
uh, purchase agreement that we kind of approved prior, you know, in 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 past year. Um, I'm really happy to do this. However, it's all it's not just going to help my department, but it's also going to help food service just in case when theirs breaks down, they'll be able to use the same box truck. You're perfect. Um, motion to approve, but no fighting over the truck. I know. <laughs> Can I get a second, please? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, no abstentions. Uh, no opposition, motion carries. Okay, congratulations, Victor and your staff. Um, 9.7, approval of the purchase of student and staff technology devices. Yes, that's me. Um, so we're looking at purchasing uh, student Chromebooks and teacher and site administrator notebooks that are two in one. So I have kind of a demonstration oh, of that one. here. This would be mm. the teacher device. It's a Dell flips Ooh, over flips into over. a tablet that can be used with what we're doing um, in the classroom. Um, it has uh, the ESSER funds uh, being used for that. So that way we can spend out those funds and, and purchase devices in that manner. Um, we're also looking to get a standardized teacher workstation um, that allows for these to connect, um, that will have a monitor that's very similar to what Gilbert ha is sitting over with, um, along with um, peripherals for keyboard and mouse. And so this will um, allow for the untethering, which I'll show for the next approval. Cool, exciting. Motion to approve, can I get a motion? Make a motion to approve. Second. A second. Okay, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. okay. Motion carries. 9.8, approval of the purchase of ViewSonic displays. Yes, and so the ViewSonic displays, um, Gilbert is sitting next to one over there. <laughs> so he's going to ban it for us. Um, we have some um, older Vizios that are deprecating at end of life, as well as some of the Samsungs. And so we're looking to replace those with ViewSonic monitors, um, some that are touchscreen, um, that allow for a lot more interactivity. You can throw to that device um, wirelessly in the classroom, um, teachers and students for sharing and collaboration. Um, so we'll be purchasing um, ViewSonic displays along with the carts that you see. Um, this cart over here also, these are Samsungs that are currently in the classroom. And um, we have carts to go with those. And we also have a computer that is used with ViewSonic to attach to the back of that. So it also has the ability to throw and be utilized as a interactive display. So as the teacher's working on it, they can pretty much switch it out to the to the screen? Yes, uh -huh. and it gives them more mobility around the classroom for that flexible um, continuity in the class. Okay. Great. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve 9.8. Okay. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 9.9, .9, approval of MOU between CSEA Chapter 503 and Santa Rosa Union School District regarding early notice of retirement. Thank you. Um, following the teachers um, negotiating this type of agreement with us, CSEA also requested a bonus for classified employees who provide early notification of retirement um, for the end of this year of $3,000. Um, and it's similar to what we have approved in the past. Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve, please. A motion to approve. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. 9.2, approval one-time off-schedule bonus for superintendent. The last employee in the district to look at a salary increase, um, Dr. Alderman requested not to have a Me Too for the ongoing 6% due to the um, budget forecast at this time, um, but the rest of the district did receive a one-time off-schedule bonus, and so this would be to provide that same bonus to the superintendent. Motion to approve 9.10. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Our next regular board meeting will be April 24th. April 24th. Wow. Okay. Um, are any suggested future board items? Um, I'd like to talk about how we're going to use the uh, art grant proposition money if we have a plan for that. I'm sure you have a plan for that. I would like to know what it is. Yeah. 
And it does it doesn't necessarily have to be the next just when we have a plan. Well, the state actually finally gave us a little bit of guidance um, and the not necessarily a template for the plan, but that we bring forward a plan for board approval, actually. So we're working on that plan. OK, anything else? Okay, can I get a motion to adjourn at time is it? 6.52? We're one minute over last time. Motion <laughs> to adjourn. Okay, can I get a second? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Have a nice evening, everyone.